Africa. For this truly is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God bless you, Facebook family and friends. I am Apostle Jarvis Hines, pastor, founder, and servant leader of Consuming Fire Ministries International. And I'm glad you decided to join us today. We are excited about what God is doing. I thank all of you who have joined us, all of our CFMI members, family, and friends, and our covenant partners. I want to say God bless you. I bid you good morning, good afternoon, whatever time zone you may be in. And I want to continually appreciate you and thank you for joining our broadcast. You could have chose any other broadcast to be a part. Churches are now beginning to open back up. People are going back into their, their temples, sanctuaries things of that nature, but you decided to join us virtually. So we thank you for being a part of Consuming Fire Ministries International. There is also a word from the Lord. I am honored myself, my beautiful wife, our pastor, our first lady, Vanessa K. Hines. She's a part of this ministry. Brother Emmanuel, Pastor Susan Flores, Pastor Vedetta Perry, and to all of the CFMI staff, family, and friends, we thank God for you this morning and glad you would join our broadcast. Glory be to God. I am excited. People of God, I don't know if you recognize it or not, but we're almost at the end of another month. We're slowly but progressively moving into the end of the year. And I'm excited about what God is doing, what God has in store for us, and what he shall continue to do in us and through us and for us. So with that being said, there is a word from the Lord this morning. I'm excited about what God is going to do, but I do have a couple of brief announcements before we prepare for the word of God this morning. Glory be to God. Real quickly, once again, for those of you who are constantly covenant partners, we thank you for praying for us, for sowing into us and being a part of this ministry. But there are ways that we want to help you to continue to help bless us and pour and support this ministry. And one of those ways that you can do that is through your giving. And there are three uh, ways uh, that you can be a blessing uh, to us. And one of those ways, my wife will have that information on also at the end of the broadcast. But there are ways that you can help us to advance and enhance the gospel and the things that we have to do to keep consuming Fire Ministries International uh, broadcasting locally as well as globally. One of those ways is that you can go to your Zelle app. You go to your Google Apple Play Store, you download that app, and you will punch in the phone number that my wife will supply. That is one way to help us. Another way, if you want to continue to be a blessing to me, you can go to our cash app. Our cash app information is dollar sign apostle 2775. That is dollar sign apostle 2775. And also I'm a part of Venmo app as well. You can also go to apostle dash 1975. So that's Venmo app apostle dash 1975. Or if you want to be able to sew into us with a check or money order, we do have a, a post mailbox uh address now we have a new location you can you can take this address down it is 6211 sierra avenue fontana california 92336 p.m.p hashtag 1386 i'll have that information on at the end of the broadcast as well you can write check or money orders and send it payable to cfmi that if you're writing a check or money order you can please make it payable to cfmi and those of you that are part of CFMI family, the covenant, we, we are a tithing ministry. We do believe that God requires the tithe. The tithe is the 10%. It belongs to God. It's holy to God. It's a portion of what God has given you to be able to give back to him for what he's given to you. So I really would encourage you to be a blessing and to sow into this ministry. If it's been a blessing to you, if you receive the word, prophecy, or confirmation through this ministry, continue to pray for us. But also, we need your financial support to continue to enhance and advance the kingdom of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Also, I am also on a, a new network called the DMV Powered Gospel Radio Network. I have a live broadcast every Thursday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Coast Time, 1.30 uh, p.m. Uh, uh, Midwestern Time. And uh, Eastern Time, 2.30 p.m. That is the DMV Power Gospel Network. Uh, the, the show is called The Fiery Furnace Broadcast. That's 11.30 a.m. every Thursday morning. If you want to be a part of this network, you can go to www.dmvpoweredgospelradio.net. 
you will go on to see my link. You can go ahead and click on to the link if it's been a blessing to you. There's ways of giving. There's ways of, of, of listening to the broadcast as well. And there's some dynamic men and women of God on our network that keeps God moving and his word going forward. So that's one way. If you miss my broadcast, there's another way you can catch it. You can go to https colon slash slash dmv powered gospel powered gospel dot airtime dot pro. And you can go on my show and you can be able to hit a recording that you have missed. Or if you want to hear us live teaching on Thursday, you can go to area code 206-806-9770. That is area code 806-206-9770. You will be able to hear our recordings live and you will be able to be a blessing to hear me teaching live on the air. Glory be to God. And also, for my YouTubers, continue. I need you subscribing. I need you to constantly. I'm also on Instagram. Um, I'm going to start putting that, promoting that up there. I'm at 7575 Bishop. You can click on there like that as well. I do have inspirational words going forth on Instagram as well as YouTube. So when you go to YouTube, Apostle Jarvis Hines, subscribe to my page. And once you subscribe to the page, hit the notification. So every time I upload a message or I'm on, you will be able to see the message. And I pray there will be a blessing to your spirit. So those are ways that you can force us. We're, we're going socially. We're, we're financially. We're doing bigger things. And God is expanding us and expanding our territory. And we couldn't do that without your prayers and your financial support. So we love you with the love of the Lord. We pray a hundredfold return of blessings back to you. In the name of Jesus, glory be to God. There is a word um, from the Lord this morning uh, found once again in our epistle of fourth, uh, uh, John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, beginning at verse 13, and we will conclude at verse 21. We're coming to the end of our series in the epistles of John, and I just want you to know that one thing that you have to be as a man or apostle or pastor of God, you have to learn to be led by the Spirit because sometimes as pastors, God gives us so much revelation and so much word, but we have to be obedient to the assignment that he wants us to share with his people. We can't always rush into what we want. We have to preach and teach what he tells us to. And so I'm excited about what God has done. I pray hopefully that God has spoken to you through these epistles, that his life, he's touched your life, he's touched you, He's moved on your behalf, and I, I'm a sincerely, sincerely hoping that the word of God has touched our hearts, has touched your soul, has touched your spirit, and I know that God does have a word this morning. So if you have your Bibles, meet me once again in the epistle of 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4, verses 13 through 21. Glory be to God. I will be reading from the New American Standard Bible. You can read along with me if you have your cell phones, your, your tablets. Very few people carry Bibles anymore. But whatever electrical or paper manuscript you have, follow along with us. Glory be to God. And it reads, By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given of us of his spirit. We have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. Verse 16, we have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love and the one who abides in his love abides in God. And God abides. That word abide means people of God remains in him. Okay. Verse 17. By this love is perfected with us. So that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. Verse 18. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves punishment, and the one who fears is not perfected in love. The one who has a fear, or that word to call phobia, a phobia, where we get our word, it's a fear. But when we're in God, there is no fear because of his love towards us. Amen. We have the love through his son, so we don't have to fear the judgment of God, okay? Glory be to God. Verse 19, we love because he first loved us. Verse 20. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, 
He is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. In our concluding verse, verse 21, and this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should love his brothers also. Glory be to God. Let us pray. Before I get into the word, I just feel that there's a worship in my spirit tonight, this afternoon, for us to preach and to teach today. I just really feel that I know things are not the way it needs to be, and, and God's told me to worship for those of you that are watching. Because I really need the word and worship to begin to intermingle with you to understand that this is just not a Sunday obligation of what we just do. This is something that is required until our Savior comes back. And I need us to get into the habit of going before the throne of God for ourselves and not waiting for somebody to take us. Yes. When we have the same rights and passages and access as born again believers as your pastor, your bishop, your overseer, your prophet, or your apostle. There's no way that we should just treat God as if it's just something that we do. Yes. We should reverence him for his royalty and for who he is. He's done a lot. And so I feel it's imperative. So we're getting ready to get into the word, but I just want to just worship and pray before we get into the word today. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We bless your name this morning, oh God. We worship you this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we decrease. We bring our flesh under subjection. Holy Spirit, take over this broadcast as only you can, God. We, we've been led by man's traditions and teachings long enough. But God, we bring our flesh under total subjection and we truly hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Oh God, every eye that's watching, every ear that's being attentive, every heart that's being open and receptive to hear. I, I pray God that you will touch areas that only you can touch. I pray God that you will bring healing in areas that only you can heal. I pray God you will open up doors that only you can open that no man can. And you will close some doors that no man can open except you. So God, as we come before your throne naked and not ashamed, God, I ask you to anoint these lips of clay for your glory. I, I decrease that you may increase. I bring my flesh under subjection. All my intellectualism, I lay it down at the altar and I allow you to speak to me, teach through me, talk through me, stand your word up in me, but hide me behind the rugged, bloody cross of your son, Jesus Christ. And I ask you today, oh God, those that are watching, that have illnesses in their bodies, we pray that this word will release supernatural healing, oh God. We decree Isaiah 53 and 5 over this word today, that it will go forth and not return back to you uh, until it accomplished what it was sent to do. Uh, we decree, God, that that family member will be saved, uh, for it is not your will that any should perish, but that all come to eternal life. Uh, and we're praying, God, that you will open up doors financially, uh, for your word declares the blessings of the Lord make it one rich and added no sorrows. Uh, so, oh God, stir up the anointing today, oh God. Uh, let the freshness of your power and your glory be released today, oh God. Let them not see me, but let them see you uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart uh, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord and Redeemer. And we bless your name now. Hallelujah. Um, hallelujah. We give you all the glory today. Hallelujah. Uh, we give you all the praise today, God. We lift our eyes to the hills from which cometh our help, and our help comes from the Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Uh, in Jesus' name, uh, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I just had to get that out of my spirit today, uh, that God's going to do something through his word today before it's over. Glory be to God. So I want to use, as we bring this series to a close, I want to continue to use for our thought this morning, loving God and loving one another. Loving God and loving one another. Glory be to God. My brothers and my sisters, men and women of God, last week from our series entitled Loving God, and loving one another. We looked at two points from our series last week. The first point we looked at, we looked at the relationship. And the second point we looked at, we looked at the revelation. Glory be to God. We dealt in relationship, in relationship, people of God, we dealt with the gift of the Spirit, knowing we have the abiding gift of the Holy Spirit, Watch this. In relationship, we dealt with, brother, we have the gift or the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Let me clarify this. It is a gift of yes. God. You did not earn that. You did not work for that. God freely gave you the gift 
of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? He is God's Spirit in the third person of his Godhead. He is God. And God gave him to us after Jesus ascended to dwell in us, to keep us, to hold on until he comes back for us. So the gift of the Holy Spirit has been given through the relationship of the abiding gift of the Holy Spirit. But also, we dealt with the grace of the Son by God sending Jesus into the world to save humanity. We dealt with the grace. What is grace, people of God? The word grace here is the Greek word charis, which means unmerited favor. It means God gave us something that we don't deserve. He gave us his Son. He graciously gave us his Son to save save a dying human Humanity. Yes. You do know, people of God, why Jesus came because of what our father Adam and Eve did. Somebody had to pay the penalty for the yes. sin that was committed. So God sends his son, who is his, who he is in the form of the son, to die to give us grace. So we have the grace of the son by Jesus, by God sending Jesus into the world to save humanity. People of God and the confession of Jesus as the Son of God by confessing our sins not with our lips. So we dealt with the grace of God, but we also dealt with the confession of Jesus as the Son of God by confessing our sins not just with our lips, but by position or stance, one that takes in Christ. So we discovered last week that when we confess, we're not just confessing with our lips. We Once we confess, we begin to take action by standing Standing on what we confessed about him. Uh, can I come back and get somebody? A lot of people can repent and say they're sorry, uh, but they don't take the true stance of repentance uh, by living what they just confessed. Yes. So here he is showing us the love that we confess with our lips. Uh, we take a position or a stance uh, that we take in Christ Jesus. Uh, and people of God, we dealt with the revelation. The revelation is knowing the character of God, knowing God by experience. God has revealed his love towards us. How have we come to know God? By the experiences or the encounters that we've had with God. Can I help you? When you look back over your life and you look back at what God has done for you, it makes you change your perspective to know that I went through all of this when all my friends couldn't help me, when doctors told me there was nothing they can do. When I got laid off my job, when I've been in abusive relationships, by me knowing God, God has been with me through my experiences or my encounters that have brought me into relationship with him. So we've come to know God by our experiences. Watch this. And followed by the confidence of knowing the love we have for him. It gives us confidence we will not face the judgment as true Christians by having our faith in God and knowing God. That word knowing that we discovered last week was the Greek word gnosko. When we get the word gnosis, which means knowledgeable or obtainable, we come to know God by the knowledge or the encounters that we have with him. So we discovered that by knowing him through our experiences or through our encounters. And we also understood, people of God, the capacity of the love. We do not have to fear his judgment because his perfect love of him casts out fear. See, when you love God, the fear that God wants every believer to have, people of God. I need you to hear me. You need to have what's called reverential fear. Reverential fear is not a fear of being afraid of God, but reverential fear is having a respect for God yeah. to where you love God so much that you don't want to do anything to go contrary to his will or to his purpose or his love that he shows toward you. I'm going to say that again. When you have reverential fear of God, you do not want to do anything that will go against his will or his love for you. So we're talking about the reverential fear of God because his perfect love cast out fear. 
But this morning, people of God, we will look from our third outline, uh, the responsibility. Uh, we looked at the revelation. Uh, we looked at all of these things. But this morning, uh, the responsibility, the revelation. Uh, but now we're looking at the responsibility. Uh, glory be to God. This morning, we're going to focus on the responsibility. Because uh, once we know we're lo God loving us and we're loving one another, uh, we will learn to be responsible uh, by dispensing his love. Uh, yeah. Because you do know you're accountable uh, for how you dispense the love of God. Uh, we've been talking for the past couple of weeks, and I've shared with you uh, the word agape, uh, or the word which simply means unconditional or Calvary love, uh, which means God loves you so much uh, that he paid a price for you uh, with no strings attached. Uh, he didn't do it with an agenda. He did it with a purpose. Uh, his purpose was to bring you back into relationship uh, that you had with God from the beginning. Uh, and I don't know about you, uh, but who would die for you and the stuff that you do. Huh? We say we love people, but we ain't taking no bullet for you. Huh? We love you, but we sure not going to prison for you. Huh? Right. We love you, we sure not going to get kicked out of our house so you can stay there. Huh? Yeah. See, there's certain things we will do, and there's certain things that we will not do. Huh? But Christ showed us through his responsibility huh? the love that he had for us. Yes. Glory be to God. Huh? Men and women of God, love is not something we are given to use on ourselves. Huh? Let me go and help somebody. Huh? Love is not for you, just you, boo-boo. Huh? The love that you have uh -huh. is supposed to be for all of God's people, huh? not just for you. Huh? And there are some people huh, that have selfish ambitions. They only love themselves, huh? and they don't love anybody else. Huh? And can I just keep it 100 and park a little pin note before I move on? Huh? We're talking about people who say they love our God, huh? but don't love the brethren. Huh? Mm -hmm. How can you say huh, you are born again, blood washed, Holy Ghost filled, tongue talking believer, and you won't even speak to the people that sit next to you and yes. labor with you? Huh? Yes. You cannot love God and not love your brother. Huh? Yeah. So he says, or oh, love people of God huh? is something that's given not for our own selfish needs. Glory be to God. Huh? It was given to us that we might give it away. Love is meant to be dispensed. Love is not meant to be held for your own benefit. Uh, okay, I'm only going to choose who I'm going to love. I'm going to love him and him, and the rest of them I can care less about. Uh, that's not how love is supposed to be portrayed. I know I'm going to get in trouble today, but I just don't care. Uh, glory be to God. Uh, the more love we give, the more we have to give The more love we give The more we have to give The more love you give There's more love that needs to be given Glory be to God When we give love to others We give God When we give love to others We're giving God Why are we giving God? Because we've discovered throughout the series Our God is love So when we're giving out love We're giving out God Because God is love Here it is Let's look at verse 19. Verse 19 suggests, people of God, we're going to deal with clause A, uh, the origin of love. Uh, we're going to deal with the origin of love. Verse 19, uh, we love because he first loved us. Uh, we love because he first loved us. Let's look at this. Uh, these words, people of God, say uh, that the love we are to practice uh, has God as the principle. Uh, the love that you and I practice and portray, uh, it is the principle of God. Yes. So what you and I are teaching or relaying, uh, it is God's principle. Uh, so what we're doing, we're practicing God's principle. Uh, and God's principle here is love. Uh, so what we're doing, we're only practicing what our God is. Uh, we're only dis dis uh, displaying or demonstrating what our God is. Uh, and our God is love. Here it is. Uh, God loves, Lady Vanessa, is a self-kindled flame. Watch this. God's love is a self-kindled flame, which means it has to come from within. Can't nobody help you how to love? Can't nobody teach you how to love? It should come from within, especially if you are a born-again, blood-washed believer. Yes. It should automatically yes. begin to kindle inside of you the love of God. See, a lot of times, well, can you teach me? No, only the Holy Spirit's job is to teach you. Yes. Man can only teach you so much, but the love of God can teach 
teach you uh, when he has self-kindled with inside of you. Glory Amen. be to God. Our love is a flame that was ignited by the flames of God's love. So why was your flame ignited? God's love ignited your flame. Well, how did it do that? By God loving on you where you were, it does nothing but becomes contagious for you to love people where they are. Let me yes. say that again. Yes. If we can, if God can love you, let me tell you something. When God loved you, and I know people don't want to hear this because everybody got these great testimonies. I was seeking God's faith. That ain't always true. Some of us was drunk. Some of us was high. Some of us was in abusive relationships. But God reached his love down to you when he could have took your life. God showed you love when he could have allowed you to die in the situation that you were in. He showed his love towards you. And as a result of God loving you where you are, the flame of love, God's love should now be ignited in you to where you can love your brother. Okay, you might have a brother that's on crystal meth, but let's talk about all the Hennessy bottles we found under your bed. Uh -huh. Now, you talk uh -huh. about everybody being abusive. Uh -huh. What about the times you had a bad boyfriend that beat up on you and God loved you in the midst of it? So we're not allowed to look down on anybody when God looked on us when we were in our situations with love. Yes. His flame ignited us. Glory be to God. Be people of God, the operation of love. Let's look at the operation. Now we looked at we looked at 19, we looked at the origin of love, how he loved us and how his flame grabbed us. But now let's look at the operation of love. Glory be to God. Operation of love, verse 20. If someone says, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. <laughs> I didn't write it. God wrote it. Though. So, so don't write me on my instant messenger. I'm telling you what the word says. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has seen. Oh, I'm going to make it perfectly plain. The apostle John here, the one who wrote the apocalyptic writing of Revelation, who, who wrote the epistles and the gospel, is why I said last week he is the beloved of God because he helped on the Jesus bosom. He was the only one that was there when Jesus was being crucified. And Jesus said, Behold my mother. John was a very loving man. Even on the island of Patmos, being exiled, and Domitian, who was harsh and cruel, he still showed the love and taught the word of yes, God until yes. he naturally died. So what he's saying here, if someone says that they love God but hate their brother, they are a liar. Because how can you be a, a born again, a blood washed, a Holy Ghost filled, tongue talking, devil stopping, demon walking person and have a hatred for your brother? I'm coming for you today because you cannot sit in the church and say, I got up with him and I don't like him, but I love God when he's created in the image of the one you love. So you cannot say that you don't love God and hate your brother. Let's look at it. It is important for us, people of God, to understand that the love spoken of here is the love of God and the love of the fellow man. So the love of agape here is not only spoken for loving God, it's also spoken of loving your brother and your fellow man. And can when I say fellow man, notice he didn't say Christian man. He did not say those that are born again. He said love those who can't stand you, who don't like you, who hope the worst for you. You're to love them too. Can I come back and get you today, people of God? What did Jesus do with all the people that spit on him and mocked him as he hung with spies? in his wrist, a crown of thorn on his head, his back, back ripped to refusiveness. What did he do? He still loved them to the end. And that is the love that you and I are supposed to have. Can I tell you one of the most powerful things if the believer can do this will convert a lot of people. Love covers a multitude of sins. Amen. If you can love people beyond their faults and see their needs, the love of God will become contagious. It will become a flame and people will be drawn. Yes. Let's look at it closely, people of God. It's supposed to be love for our, not only for God, but for our fellow man. Glory be to God. It is impossible for anybody to love God and not love man. It is impossible. How can you love God and not love man when man is created in the image of God? Can I tell you, God created male and female with love to love him. Yes. That's why we were created. He wanted something that would love him without being controlled or made to love him. He wanted us to love him unconditionally like he loves us. So 
So it is impossible to say that you love God and that you don't love man. That is supernaturally, un unrealistically impossible for you not to love God and not love man. Glory be to God. There are those who believe that it is easier to love than it is to love man. I'm going to say that again. There are those who believe that it is easier to love than it is to love man. They believe I can love, but I don't have to love man. You have people who have the mindset, well, I can just love God, don't mean I have to love people. I beg the difference Amen. because your God loves everybody. Let me go ahead. I was, I was having a conversation, and I'll get back, and I used to talk to the saints who God just kill them. Do you think it delights God to kill people? Let me come on and step on some toes. If God be the case, everybody should be wiped out. But the love of God loves you in spite of what you done. And some people, we preach holiness. We got to be careful because when we start preaching holiness, we start putting ourselves on this pedestal like we never made no mistakes. And I came to let you know, God loves you in spite of. If man don't even love you, God, the one who you created in his image and his likeness, loves you. Yes. Glory be to God. But John said, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. <laughs> For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. In other words, this suggests that loving the unseen God is much more difficult than loving people whom you can see. In other words, how can you say you, you love a God you never touched, you never saw, yes. you never hugged? You never embraced, but you don't, but you love, but you love love the people who you can touch, who you can speak to, who you can love, and who you can embrace. You cannot say it, and I'm coming for them today because it's amazing to me. Out of everybody, can I tell you that's been the same? Show me some love. Show me some love. Show the homie some love. Show the people some love. And when we show people love, the people who really love you are the people we mistreat. Yes. The ones who don't love you are the people that you love. I don't understand it. But this is what God is saying. How can I say I hate a person that I see, but I'm loving on the God who I have not even seen yet? So we have to change the philosophy on the way we say we love. Glory be to God. Here it is. See. We're dealing with the obligation of love now. What is the obligation? The obligation is in his word. Verse 21 says, and this is the commandment of God. Watch this. This is the commandment of God. This is it. Here it is. In this commandment, we have from him that the one who loves God should love his brothers also. The one who loves God should love his brothers also. He didn't say, well, you should think about loving your brothers or consider loving your brothers. No, you might just want to love them. No, you are required yes. by commandment to love your brother. Here it is. In other words, <coughs> he relates to this. In these words, we are reminded of the great commandment Jesus said, now I want you to see this for you New Testament believers. You can't have a New Testament without an old one. Let me come on back and get you. This is your Messiah. This is the anointed one, Yeshua, Yah. All the names y'all give him, let's see what he says. Listen to what he says. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And then this is the greatest and the foremost, most foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. In verse 40, on these two commandments depends the whole law and the prophets. Yes. Matthew 22, verses 37 through 40. Let me come on and get somebody. For those of you scholars who think y'all know some stuff, let me help you today. You do know Matthew was not the New Testament, don't you? Because Jesus had not yet fulfilled the requirement. So Jesus himself had to go by the abiding teachings of the Mosaic law. And the law that he's quoting here is from the Ten Commandments. Yes. He's telling people, you should love the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, soul and strength and the second is like unto the first love your neighbor as yourself on these two stand the law and the prophets what were the law and prophets teaching they was teaching on the law that God gave 
with them until Jesus was to come. So what he's basically saying here, love fulfills the law of God. Yeah. The true law is to love people. And I have a problem with people that can say they can quote scriptures from Genesis to Revelation and got an evil bone in every part of their body. Uh -huh. Won't speak, won't talk, won't acknowledge, but you say you love God. You cannot love a God whom you have not seen and hate your brother who you see every day. Why? Because your brother or your sister that you hate on should remind you of their made in the very same image and the likeness of the God that created you. Oh, yes. let me come on and get somebody. God created us in his image and his likeness. So when you hating on me, you hating on God. Yes. Because I look just like him and so do you. So if I look like him and you look like him, how are you going to hate on me and love him but disrespect me? When we both are created in his love for each other. Glory Amen. be to God. Here it is. Jesus also said just before his death, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. I'm going to deal with this one just a minute. And even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Mm -hmm. By this all men know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So what distinguishes you is not your clergy collar. What distinguishes you is not your cross being in your left pocket. What, this, what, what includes you is not your talit that you wear over your head. What encourages you is not how many days a week you fast and pray. What distinguishes you as a disciple of Jesus is the love you show for one another. That shows people that you are a child of the Most High God. And I'm talking today because the church has gotten very bitter. We say we love people, but we won't talk to them. Now, let me go ahead and, and clarify what I'm saying. Now, there are some people God has to help you to love them. Yeah. But there are some people that we, even in, in spite of us not loving on them, we are required by God. Because if we love God and we pray for them, then we should love on them like God loves them. What did God say? It is not his will that any should perish, but that all come to eternal life. Yes. Why? Because we talked about this in the beginning. Gehenna was never designed for his people. It was designed for the demons and the angels who rebelled against him. That's where they're supposed to go. It's not for us. He's had a place made for yeah. us to be with him. He loved us enough that he came down here and died, and then he went back to prepare a place for us to live with him in eternity. How much love is that? That is the love that we're supposed to have for one another. And can I just be honest with you? We say we love you. We have it on our buildings. A church that has love. You tell me to come as I am, but you really don't want to receive me like I am. Because if you really love me and receive me, you wouldn't look at my dress code. You wouldn't look at my tattoos. You wouldn't look at my shoes and my pumps and my car. You will love me unconditionally like the God you preach says he loves me. Glory be to God. Here it is. Those who claim Love for God. Their father have an obligation to love man, his brother. <laughs> Those who claim love for God their, as their father have an obligation to love man, his brother. So if you're claiming you love God, you are obligated, mm -hmm. which means there is no choice. You have to love man like God loves man. And I know this is hitting some hearts today because the first thing we do is think of what they did to us. But let me come and get you, boo-boo. What the stuff you did to people? Come on. And God still loves you? Yeah, everybody don't know what you did. You can, I'm just going to positively and lightly out of my mind, I'm going to act like it don't exist. You can act like you don't exist, but you did. And he loves you through it. So why can't you love them like he loves you? Yes. This is what Paul, we have an obligation, according to the Apostle John, to love the men like we love God. It is our obligation as born-again believers to show love. This is what puzzles me in church. When a person comes in our church drunk and high and look in a certain way, we look our nose down on them. And some of us that got so spiritual, oh, that's a witch. That's a warlock. That's a psychic. Well, let's talk about you when you first came. What did you look like? But we loved you in spite of, I know I'm talking today, I loved on you when you looked toe up from the flow up, when you looked like a neck up from the wreck up from the neck up, I loved you just the same. So how are we not to love each other? Yeah, amen. God's calling his church 
And this is why people, are, and I've never seen this, and I'm coming to my close. I've never seen the end of I'm seeing believers, uh, Dr. Susan, Pastor Vendetta, being converted back to Muslims. How can you turn away from such a greater love? They're going into, watch this, they're going into Hinduism. They're going into Buddhism. They're going into Hebrew Israelites. They're reverting back to New Ages. And I'm asking myself, why is this? And when you talk to everybody who's left the body of Christ, you know the first thing they're going to tell you? I did not feel the love from the saints. That's what they will tell you. And that is a serious problem in the church today. We have to learn to love one another. And John has let us be known. You can't say you love God, but don't love the brother. You can't say you love a God whom you have not seen, but hate the brother that you do see. I came to set the record straight today. If you don't love your brother, you don't love God. This is point blank. I didn't write it. The Bible said it. If you don't love your brother, you don't love God. Well, preacher, how you going to say that? You don't know what they did to me. I don't have to know what they did for you. What I need to know, what did Jesus do for you? Yes. And if Jesus delivered you, it doesn't matter what they did. And let me, let me go ahead and park a note here because I, I, I'm so tired of these Justin Timberlake saints cry me a river. Let me come on and help you today. Everybody hurt me. Everybody always me. Everybody hurt me. Well, what about the stuff that you did, boo? You wasn't always no saint. You done did some stuff. I may have not seen it, but God saw it, but he loved you through it in spite of what people done to you. And let me tell you the evidence that God loves you. You survived the rape. You survived the, the mental abuse. You survived the domestic violence. You survived the people yes. ignoring you. You yes. survived your family. Well, I mean, I feel like preaching today. You survived Survived everybody talking about you. You survived people trying to plot on you. That is the love of God. Yeah. Glory to God. Oh my God. This is the love. We talking about show me some love. Yeah. I'm showing you some love. To love you through what you do. And let me tell you something. It really shows that you're a child of God when you can love them while they're still in their sin. Yes. Come on, somebody. Talk to me. You can love them while they're still in their sin. I know what you're doing, but it's not my job to beat you. It's my job to tell you the truth. Now, that don't mean I'm going to come in agreement with what you're doing because I don't. But I love you to get up out of it because God has more for you. That's the love of God. When I can look beyond what you're doing and I can see your future that God has for you. That's how God views us. Yes. The love of God. It is the love of God, the Bible tells me, that draws man to repentance. Mm -hmm. His love, his agape, his unconditional Calvary love draws you and I to repentance. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Here it is, people of God. We cannot escape the fact that we must love all those whom God loves. <laughs> we cannot escape the fact God loves them all good, bad, or indifferent. And if God loves them, we have to love them too. I know we want to give them a two-piece, a couple of biscuits, a couple of kicks, but we can't do that. Because God loves them. Why? Because God sees more of them than we do. We're looking at what they do. God's looking at who they can become. Yes. I'm going to say that again. We're looking at the fact that God, we can't escape the fact that we must love all of them. Why? Because God looks at them for who they're going to become. He doesn't look at them for who they are because if he looked at them for who they were, then his holiness would take them out. But God sees them as a soul that needs his son. Yes. And if God views them as that, so should we. Amen. We have to view them as being sons of God. Glory be to God. In closing, there was once, people of God, a man who sought to win the affection of a certain lady for many years before she finally said yes. For many years, this persistence, but rather shy man slipped a weekly love letter under his neighbor's door. So this man has been pursued this woman for years. He would write her letters telling her how much he loved her. But he, he slept it under the door. He was shy man, but he wrote out of his shyness of the love that he had for her, right? Watch this. It says, but she continually refused to speak and men despite that had parted them many years. So this man is steadily trying to redeem the love that he lost. So he's writing letters of love to see if she would forgive him or love him in spite of what he did, right? Mm -hmm. But watch what happened. And it says that had parted them for many years. 
after writing 2,184 love letters without ever getting a spoken or written word answered, the single-hearted man eventually gathered enough courage to present himself in person. Uh, so he said, I've been writing letters, uh, but now I'm going to present myself to you in person, right? Watch this. Uh, he knocked on the door and of the reluctant lady asked her, to, asked her to marry him. Then to his delight and surprise, she accepted his proposal. This is a picture of what God did. Time and time again, God tried to get his message of love through to his human creation, but he got little response. Mm -hmm. Finally, when there was no other way, he wrapped himself in flesh and came into the world and died on the old rugged cross. I tried to come through my prophets. I tried to come through the burnt offerings. I tried to come through this. I came through Moses. Y'all didn't hear me. I came through Elijah. You didn't hear me. I came through Elijah. You didn't hear me. I came through Jeremiah, Obadiah, Daniel, Ezekiel. You didn't hear me. I came through Ruth. I came through Deborah. I came through the Marys at the tomb. You still didn't hear me. So now I have to wrap myself up in coming down on the cross to show you how much I love you. And that is the love that God wants us to do. No matter how many times I keep trying to reach out to you, no matter how many letters and how many storms, how many visions I've shown you that I love you, now I got to come in person. Can I help somebody today? Sometimes you got to go to people in person. Instead of being behind the wall, you need to man up or woman up and go confront them and say, I love you and there ain't nothing you can do about it. Why do I love you? In spite of what you did to me, God loved me when I could have died. God loved me when the devil could have took my soul. God loved me when my own family didn't love me. Yes. That's why I'm able to love you because of what Jesus did for me. Yes. Glory be to God. The man kept writing letters. And after a while, he wrote so much. And then when he showed up, sometimes it's not enough to just write it out. Sometimes you got to show up and show. Yes. Love is more than to be written. It's to be demonstrated. And this is what we saw Christ did. So if Christ is to love us, we are to love one another like he loved us. Glory be to God. And I want to encourage somebody today through this word as we come to the closing of our series of John. John has showed us many aspects and ways of how we're to love him. John has, the Apostle John has introduced us to the agape love, the unconditional, no strings attached love of God. And I came to encourage somebody today. I don't know why I said it, but the Holy Ghost let me. Somebody's been hurt and they feel like I'll never go back to the house of God again. They fake, they hypocrites, and I got a story for that. I say every time somebody say the church is full of hypocrites, I, I go back to the story that my father told me in closing. Now, he told me, he said there was a country preacher. And he said there was a little boy who used to play in the yard every Sunday. Uh, and the little boy would just watch the preacher go by and go to the church. So one day, uh, the young boy said, hey, Mr. Preacher. He said, yes, young man. Uh, he said, why do you go down to church with all them hypocrites and sinners? Uh, the preacher said, oh, young man, uh, I'd rather be in church with some of them than to be in hell with all of them. Uh, so let me help you today. Uh, I'd rather be in church with the hypocrites uh, and, the, and all those that struggle than to be in a place with them that know are going to be held accountable in the end. Uh, because God has put a place for us called the church which is called the hospital to help bring healing for you to come to a relationship with a God that loves you and that is the Jesus that I present to you today. You can come to him no matter where you are. I've, I've, I've seen people come with bottles in their mouths. I've seen people come with, with weed in their mouth. I've seen people come just, oh my God, ain't no telling where they've been, but God loved them. In spite of, and that same Jesus uh, who loves us and commands us to love one another, I offer him to you today. I offer Jesus to you today. My heart's going heavy. I don't know if people are really paying attention. I was up this morning and I was reading in my own home state of Miami, Florida. There have been more drive-by killings than there have anywhere else. There's killing going on in California. There's fires going on in San Jose. We're getting people mentally ill, going back, killing everybody on the job, bringing bombs and explosives. And we don't see the change in the signs of the time. The Holy Spirit is talking. But church, are we listening? This is why I tell people who are in positions of authority, be careful how you treat people. Because you really don't have a clue of what people are dealing with. Yes, it is for you sometimes yes. to show them love. Because you may be the only person that will help them come to know the Lord. 
It's our accountability and our responsibility to bring souls to Jesus. And I offer that Christ to you today. I ask you to come wherever you may be, behind your computer, if you're driving, wherever you are, I offer Jesus Christ to you today. I pray the prayer with you today, and I truly ask you to open up your heart, open up your mind to receive the call to come to Jesus today. Amen. Tomorrow is not promised. I don't even say that anymore. The next few seconds are not promised. We talk to people and we hang up the phone, and the next thing we know, we get a phone call saying, you know, he or she died. That's how quick time is required. You don't know when the dash is going to go between your name. Yes. But today we offer Jesus Christ to you. And I'm pleading with you apostles and prophets. I know God wants us to bless us prosperity. He wants to bless us. But if you don't have salvation, what profits you to gain this world and lose him? It profits you nothing. Because when you got salvation, you can lose your money, but you'll still have peace. Yes. You can lose the car. You can even lose the job or the promotion. But you got him and he'll give you peace because he'll give it to you again. Amen. That's the Jesus that got beat for you, spit on for you, lied on for you. Allowed them. But guess what? As Dr. Susan said, he coming back again. Read Revelation 19. He coming back on his horse. Faithful in truth. He coming back to judge. Now, he ain't the lamb no more. He's the lion. He coming back to vindicate what they did. It ain't over. Mm. Isn't that what they say? To be continued? Yes. It ain't over. That's the Jesus Amen. that wants to save you. Today I offer you, wherever you are, raise your hands and just repeat, Father, Father today, today, after hearing the word, after hearing the word that you love me, that you love me I, acknowledge I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I am a and I need to be saved. And I need to be saved. But I repent, but I repent. And, I and I ask for forgiveness. For forgiveness. God, I repent. God, I repent. Because, because you just showed, you just showed me, through your word me through your word that you love me. That you love me. By sending your son Jesus. By sending, by sending your, your son Jesus. Who hung, who hung, who bled, who bled, who suffered, who suffered, who died, who died, died but resurrected from but resurrected. Resurrected. And today, I receive him by faith as Lord and as Savior. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Today, I surrender and I submit to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you just repeated that after me, according to Romans 10 and 9, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. But I don't want you to stop there. I need you to find you a Bible teaching, preaching ministry that believes in teaching and preaching the word of God, that also believes in the gifts of the spirit, that believe in the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. What is the apostle? The, the, the apostolos, the messenger, the one who, who establishes the house, who makes sure that the doctrine is sound, who plants the church, okay? The prophet, the one who hears from God, who's the mouthpiece to declare what God is saying. The evangelist or the evangelizo who preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news about his life, death, and resurrection. The poeman, the pastor, the shepherd who protects you from the wolves and from all the things that will take you down. And that same pastor is apt to teach you to help you grow in the grace and the knowledge and the wisdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you need to find a ministry that will help you grow and come into your relationship and the knowledge of who the Lord is until he comes back for his church. And if you've done that, please write me. Write me and let me know that you received Jesus Christ today. We gave the address out, 6211 Sierra Avenue, Fontana, California, 92336, PMB, hashtag 1386. Let us know that you received Christ. We can send you some evangelistic material to help you grow in your relationship with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Or, or hit us back on the, on the Facebook Live or in our messenger and let us know how this message has blessed you today. So we thank you. And today I speak before I get off this broadcast today. I speak as an apostle of God under the authority and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I pray for healing for the body. I pray for healing for the nations. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem and her citadels. I pray for my covenant brothers that they will come to embrace Yeshua HaMashiach as the Messiah. I pray, oh God, 
for those that are losing their jobs in our states. Families going to bed without food to eat. The economy is trying to shut us down. I speak blessings, overflow, healing, and deliverance. That it will flow through this camera and touch your body. Amen. That when you go back to the doctors, they won't find anything. Amen. That when you go back for the promotion, God has already opened up the door. Amen. And that son and that daughter who's been struggling with addictions and habits, I pray for total deliverance. Yes. In the name of Jesus, I call those things that be not by faith as if they are. We give you glory today. We give you honor and praise in the name of Jesus. And as I close, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his confidence upon you. And may the Lord give you peace. This and all blessings I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Peace. Amen. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord.